In this video, <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple of problems where I calculate the force between two charges. I said in an earlier video that forces always occur in pairs. What I'm doing here, when I say the force between two charges, what I mean is the magnitude of the force, length of the vector. The two forces between two charges will have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So what I'm after now is that magnitude, that number. <clears throat> so that's going to be one number, although there are two forces because force has a magnitude and direction. But here we're calculating the magnitude. So let's look at this first problem. What is the force, and I put it in quotes, meaning the magnitude of the force between two electrons separated by 50 p.m.? What's p.m.? p.m. is picometer. So let's figure out how to solve this problem. Let's begin. So the equation we're going to use to obtain this force, remember it's this constant k sub e, q1, q2, over the separation squared. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we have to be able to look up these constants. No constants are given to you. You have to have, either in your memory, or you need to look up in your notes, the charge of an electron, Q um, of the electron. The electron, I typically put E minus. So the charge of this thing is equal to minus The elementary charge Q sub E. Now, <clears throat> the elementary charge, remember Q sub B, e, or you don't have to remember, you just look in your notes. Q sub B e is 1.6010 minus 19 Coulomb. So the charge of the electron is simply negative that value minus 1.60, 10 minus 19 Coulomb. <clears throat> what about this constant I've written? Uh, let me clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> this constant K sub E. <clears throat> what is that? Again, you can memorize it if you like, or you can just look it up. Value of K sub E, 8.9. 9 <clears throat> times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb. So I've done this long enough. I can memorize it, but <clears throat> you have to refer to your notes. <clears throat> when I give you a problem, I assume you either know the constants or you're going to look them up. All right. <clears throat> we need R. In this problem, R is 50 picometer. So R is 50. <clears throat> Notice that I almost always try to stay with three significant figures. <clears throat> so 50, now pico stands for, if you can either memorize it, you know, look it up, minus 12 meter. Those are the numbers that go into the equation. Let's go back and now we'll just plug them in. 8.99 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. <clears throat> I'm going to erase this right here now. Need more room to work. <clears throat> Then I've got Q1, Q2, minus 
minus 1.60. 10 minus 19 Coulomb, minus 1.60. We erase some more stuff I'm not using. Ten minus nineteen coulomb. <clears throat> this is divided by R squared, which is fifty ten minus twelve meter quantity squared. There's the equation. <clears throat> Let's start to simplify a little bit. Notice we change the pen here. Coulomb times Coulomb cancel the Coulomb squared. This meter squared in the denominator cancels this meter squared. So our answer will be in Newtons. Force in Newtons. Now at this point you could take this equation with all these numbers, all these powers of 10, plug them one at a time into a calculator. That would work. I prefer to simplify separate numbers from powers of 10. Let's try that right now. FE. I'm going to take the numbers and put them, parentheses, on the left. 8.99 <clears throat> minus 1.6. There's another minus 1.6. <clears throat> this is divided by the number here, 50 squared. <clears throat> so those are all the numbers that occur. Now, in another parentheses, I'm going to take the powers of 10. If I work from left to right, I have a 10 to the 9. <clears throat> I have a 10 minus 19. I have another 10 minus 19 divided by 10 minus 12 squared. All of this, Newton. Okay, again, if you prefer to plug one at a time into the calculator, you can do it. I find it very tedious to put all these powers of 10, 10 to the 9, to the minus 19 into the calculator. What I've done is I've separated the numbers. <clears throat> 8.99, there's the 1.6, minus 1.6, minus 1.6, 50 squared denominator. Powers of 10, <clears throat> 10 to the 9, minus 19, minus 19, clean that up a little bit. Divided by to the minus 12 squared. Okay, now this is what I would put into my calculator. This number right here. 8.99 times negative 1.6, negative 1. If you put that in your calculator, what you will find is this number. 9.21 10 to the minus 3. <clears throat> That's what comes out of the calculator. What about these powers of 10? This part, <clears throat> often I'll just do it <clears throat> with simple math. Let's remember some rules. <clears throat> these rules, let me just use another color. <clears throat> if you have 10 to the m times 10 to the n. That's equal to 10 to the m plus n. If you have 10 to the m divided by 10 to the n, that's equal to 10 to the m minus n. <clears throat> and <clears throat> remember a couple other things. Of course, if you have 1 over 10 to the m, that becomes 10 to the minus m. Or if you have 1 over 
10 to the minus m that becomes 10 to the m. <clears throat> One other thing to keep note of, 10 to the 0 equals 1. <clears throat> okay, the reason I point this out, if you remember these rules, these powers of 10, basically they're always going to be integer numbers. So you're just doing simple addition and subtraction to solve these powers of 10. I like to do it because I find it tedious to type all of that into the calculator. Okay, so let's <clears throat> now clean some of this up. I can continue my work here. <clears throat> I want these powers of 10. You see in the top, I've got 10 to the 9, minus 19, minus 19. So <clears throat> I have to add those integers. Well, minus 19 and minus 19, minus 38. I add 10 to the 9 to it. I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have <clears throat> those powers of 10. 10 to the 9 minus 38. <clears throat> In the bottom, I square that 10 to the minus 12. That gives me 10 to the minus 24. I'm just add to the minus 12 times to the minus 12. I add the exponent. I look at this thing. <clears throat> That's going to be 10 to the 9 minus 38. 10 to the plus 24. Again, you don't have to do it this way. I do it because I just find it's tedious on the calculator. Also, if I take good notes, it's easy for me to go back and recheck my work. I simply look at that 10 to the 9, 10 to the 9. Minus 19, minus 19, minus 38. Minus 12, minus 12, minus 24. I rearrange it like that. Now I see I can begin to work some of this in my head. <clears throat> 38 minus 38 plus 24. Difference is going to be 10 to the minus 14. The difference between 24 and 38 is 14. I've got a negative. So that and 10 minus 5. Okay. I like to do it this way. You don't have to do it that way, but I can go back and recheck my work pretty easily. 10 to the minus 5. And it's Newton. So the answer to the problem, <clears throat> the magnitude of the force, F sub B is 9.21. I'm going to add these exponents. Minus 3, minus 5, minus 8, Newton. That's the answer to this problem. The force between two electrons separated by 50 picometer. I've done it in such a way I can go back and recheck my work. K sub B, Q1, Q2, there's R. I separate the numbers. I separate the powers of 10. If you're working a problem, you, it's always good to get, be able to go back and recheck your work. If you plug everything into the computer, I'm sorry, everything into your calculator, the only way to recheck it is to redo the whole problem. Here I can check this first part, <clears throat> the numbers, 9.21 to the minus 3. I can recheck the second part, the powers of 10. I put it together. That's the answer right there. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to do one more problem. Just to illustrate. Again, 
when I say the force, what I mean is the magnitude of the force. Magnitude. What is the length of that vector? By the way, in the case of the electrons, it's two electrons. That's the magnitude. And we would say the force is repulsive. Repulsive, meaning the two electrons are repelled from one another. That's the magnitude of the force when they're separated by 50 picometer. Now I ask for <clears throat> the force between a calcium two plus ion and an electron separated by 200 picometers. I want to look at the force. And again, when I say the force, I really mean the magnitude of the force. The length of that <coughs> vector, which applies to the two forces that are equal and opposite. So the magnitude of the force from a calcium ion and an electron separated by 200 picometers. All right, let's try to go a little bit faster. The force is going to be the constant 8.99, 10 to the 9 Newton eater squared per coulomb squared. <clears throat> now we need the two charges. Let's go over here. Consider that. What is the charge of a calcium 2 plus? Remember the rule. For each electron added, you add minus 1.6 to the minus 19 coulomb. For each electron removed, you add a plus 1.6 to the minus 19 coulomb. So this will have a charge of 2 times 1.6 times 10 minus 19 coulomb or 2 times 1.6 3.2 10 minus 19 coulomb okay <clears throat> so we've got the calcium charge 3.20 10 minus 19 coulomb remember that the charge of an electron is the minus 1.6 10 minus 19 coulomb this is divided by the distance squared which is the 200 picometer 200 times 10 minus 12 meter quantity squared <clears throat> there's our equation now <clears throat> once again Coulomb, Coulomb, cancels Coulomb squared. We have a meter squared, cancel the meter squared, so the answer is going to be in Newton. Okay, now let's gather up the numbers. Okay, we have 8.99. There's the 3.20 for the calcium. Minus 1.60 for the electron. <clears throat> for the separation squared, we have the 200 picometer squared. For the powers of 10, <clears throat> We have from our constant 10 to the 9 from the two charges <clears throat> minus 19 minus 19 for this problem of course for the separation in picometer squared is minus 12 quantity squared <clears throat> of course that's Newton <clears throat> now <clears throat> if we Put these numbers into the calculator. <clears throat> That's the part you want to use the calculator for. What you'll find is that part of the problem is negative 1.15 times 10 minus 3. <clears throat> for the powers of 10, we did this before, but 
you know, the problem could be different. Let's just quickly review. 10 to the 9 minus 19 minus 19 will be 10 minus 38 minus 12 squared. That's 10 minus 24. So this will give us 10. We'll just add these. We're going to have 9 minus 38 <coughs> minus 24 when it comes to the top of the fraction becomes plus 24. Now, <clears throat> I wouldn't put powers of 10 in the calculator. If I put anything in the calculator, it's going to be these integers. 9 minus 38 plus 24. 9 plus 24 is 33 minus 38. That's going to be 10 minus 5. <clears throat> That's a 5. 10 minus 5. <clears throat> so we go back here to our equation. We have times 10 minus 5. We have Newton. So the answer to this problem, the force between a calcium 2 plus ion and an electron separated by 200 picometer, the number we calculate, Fe equals minus 1.15. There's a minus 3, a minus 5, times 10 minus 8, Newton. Okay, <clears throat> we want the magnitude. When we say magnitude, we mean the positive number. And typically, we didn't do this in the previous problem, because it was a positive number. You put these vertical lines on either side. The magnitude of this is 1.15 times 10 minus 8. Newton, and now we interpret the meaning of the negative sign. The negative sign meant that this force, magnitude 1.15 to the minus 8 Newton, was an attractive force. That's the meaning of the negative number. If you calculate a positive number, they're repulsive. You calculate a negative number, they're attractive. The magnitude, you write it as a positive number. By saying attractive or repulsive, we have taken into account the vector nature of this thing. Okay, so with that, I want to uh, end this video having solved a couple of problems, and I thank you for watching to the end.